Good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Lanfrica Talks. I'm your host, Chris, and for those who are new, Lanfrica Talks is a show that is focused on amplifying diverse viewpoints on AI, technology, and data. Through the Lanfrica Talks and through the various speakers that we have and the conversations we have, we try to cultivate an inclusive platform where diverse perspectives thrive. And through this, we aim to reshape the conversation to reflect a more equitable understanding of AI's impact on our world. Today, we have our esteemed guest, Brian. Brian, Brian Muhia is an independent researcher, a software engineer with more than a decade of hands-on experience and an artist. Traditional academia wasn't his chosen path, but he found profound passion and success in his unique journey. He is the co-founder of Fahamo Incorporated, a technology company started in November 2022 with the mission to build and explain AI research assistants and AI learning assistants that are beneficial to humanity. He also works with Equiano Institute, which is an AI safety research nonprofit centering Africa, where he is a CTO of the Causality, Interpretability, and Representation Learning Group. His main research focus is mechanistic interpretability for neural network-based systems. We're very happy to have you, Brian, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for that introduction. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to walk you through this paper that I wrote in May uh, to explain systems that uh, my team and I have been working on in, uh, in, the, in the past year. And the aim of this work is to explain uh, what I guess we call uh, question answering systems that are based on large language models and uh, in their many different variations. So uh, there are many different types of systems that have been built or that are coming up or that are likely to be built. And we think that this kind of work uh, explains a whole bunch of them and can help fix problems in them. Uh, yeah. So the, bas the basic uh, fields, if you want to look this up uh, for different kinds of uh, aspects of this work are uh, factored cognition, that's the first field that I guess you would want to look up. Uh, if you want to look at something that's been, that's some work that's been done on this uh, related to ours, uh, you should check out this link, the primer from, from Ort. Yeah, that's a really good work system. Uh, another uh, set of things we're bringing to this work is causal influence diagrams, uh, causality research. And a third is uh, how do we, uh, I thought is to answer the question, how do we use causal influence diagrams for explainability? Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a question we ask. Uh, a question, another question we ask is, uh, when building systems like this, do we, uh, when if, uh, are we better served by understanding and critiquing the data flow in the system before we build the system at all? Uh, so that's, that's another thing we try and do. Uh, and then uh, the final thing is to figure out how to verify that the data flow that we've designed is correct uh, using, uh, log I guess, what you would call logic programming, uh, logic programming tools. So uh, the explainability work, uh, so I guess this, this, this paper brings in a, a bunch of different fields together. Uh, and we're, use, we're trying to use uh, many different things to explain one system or one class of systems. So, yeah, so we'll walk through uh, different aspects of this. So the first, uh, I guess the main thing that we're trying to do is uh, explain data flow in, la in large language model systems, uh, which are known to be, uh, to have flaws in, uh, I guess what you'd call honesty. Uh, systems can hallucinate, and when they do, they can introduce deceptive answers into many different kinds of systems that we're interested in using. 
So in order to prevent that, uh, or, it, or at least to characterize those problems early on, uh, we, uh, we want to not describe them, uh, systems like that, and then uh, try and resolve the problems. And usually the systems are uh, doing several things in steps. So the first thing is to generate some questions, uh, to filter questions for, or rather to filter answers for incorrectness or for inappropriateness, uh, to answer sub questions and then to aggregate context to, to fulfill a request. So when agents are being involved in all of these tasks, uh, they might make mistakes and you want to figure out how to filter out their problem. Uh, but the, the, the main the main contribution here is like how do you how do you design the data flow that does that, not the how to filter, not the like uh, how to uh, make recommendations for different aspects of the system, but how to, how to understand the data flow and how to improve it before implementation. So, I'll just uh, go through this. If you want to go if you want to uh, study more of this, uh, you should look up the causal incentives working group for causality who developed this library called PySeed, which, which is what we use to, to uh, generate the diagrams, right? So uh, in, in, when we have this uh, system uh, that answers questions for, for a user. So what happens is someone just goes to a website, can go to, like, they, they would go to, to BARD or to ChatGPT, and they ask a question, or they have an instruction that they give to the system. In the background, they have data. Uh, they've uploaded a bunch of documents, so they have uh, given access to the system, uh, a bunch of documents and databases. So uh, what you want is the system to answer the question. Uh, the first thing that happens when, they, when the user asks a question is the, search, is, is the search is conducted to find paragraphs, and then those paragraphs are, not, are then sent to uh, the, the language model API, which now summarizes the system. The, the data that was provided. So this whole process uh, you basically argue that is, is defined as a directed acyclic graph. Uh, if, you, if you think about it uh, mathematically and algorithmically, that's what that's the data structure that's being it's being generated during this whole process. So uh, that's uh, what we want to explain next. So uh, I guess a, a seed or causal influence diagram is a tuple. Uh, containing nodes and edges, or vertices and edges, and uh, VE is a direct cyclic graph with a set of vertices and edges, and then the vertices are partitioned into decision nodes, uh, marked D, and utility nodes, marked U, which are represented by diamonds. So if I can scroll all the way down here and skip all of, that, all of this stuff, I can show the diagram itself. Uh, we talked about utility nodes. This is O, that's a utility node. And then M1 is a, is a decision node. So this is the model that would be answering a question, a user's question. So uh, I and C are called chance nodes. That's why they are they're grayed out, gray circles. Uh, and they're chance nodes because within the system, whenever someone is asking a question, uh, they could be asking a question that is based on what the system is designed for or they could be testing the system, red teaming it, or adversarially attacking it. So prompt inject, you can think of a prompt injection attack as an example of this. So you don't know, uh, well, the direction, the directionality of this, like uh, whether it's to the, the intention of the system or not. So we call this chance because it's random. The context as well is also random because uh, it's data that is provided from externally. So it's not within the training data set of the system of the model rather, but it's a collection of data that the user in added for themselves. And the, part, the point is that the system will answer the questions about the user, about the documents rather. So the, pro the way we get this is the user will ask questions and then the, the question will be sent to, uh, I guess, an API. And then that API will find paragraphs, right? Using a, it's a semantic search process or something like that. The, the paragraphs it finds are likely to have the answer to the question, but we don't know. So we sent that that whole list to a filter, which checks specifically if the, if the question is answered by the paragraph. So uh, that first list is what we call the data source. Uh, they scroll up here, this. And then the context is the list 
that we get after we do the filtering. So that's what we get here. Now the user's question and the context are found. They're both sent to the model and then the model answers the question, sending it out to the, to the user. The utility node is a diamond, rather the output node is a diamond or a utility node because the user gives feedback to the system, giving reward. So utility in reinforcement learning it stands for reward. So that's what we use as, as, a, as a marker for that. Yeah. Uh, something else uh, to note here is the code that we're using. Uh, we're using a library called PySeed, which you can use when install using pip in Python. Um, and the code for the diagrams is correct, and we'll use it for the for, for basically every other aspect of the, 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 of the talk. It's very important to like, uh, get, get a handle on this. So we'll go through a bunch of this code. This is a, uh, a bunch of these diagrams as we go through this. Uh, we'll note the paths. The path, uh, basically every, every array is a path here. So we have a path CM1 goes there. We have a path IC goes here. We have a path IM1 goes here. And a path M1O goes here. So, and then you mark the decisions and the utilities. So this is important for later. I think uh, we'll go through that at some point. So yeah, I think uh, this uh, tracks, I think, uh, then this is actually the simplest case because we only have one model in, in, the, system, in, the, in the interaction. Uh, the thing to note here is that, yes, the user will get uh, some answer from the system, but it's not always guaranteed to be the right answer because the context could be uh, incorrect or M1 could hallucinate. And when it does, there's no filter. So the user will get the answer based on the hallucination um, in the system. So this this is the vulnerability, I guess, in the, in, in, uh, in the in architecture that, that, that looks like this, basically. Um, and the um, another point of the paper is to go through all of these diagrams and point out the vulnerabilities in each one of them. And I would say the, the main vulnerability in most of them is uh, prompt injection attacks and also uh, uh, problems with hallucination. And those are the main things that we're really trying to work around or to resolve. So, yeah. Uh, we worked with one agent, so we can go to, to multiple agents. Um, the second type, is, I guess the first type of, of multi-agent system is uh, this one where we can see, we can just walk through the, the path. So we have the user's intent or the question that they ask get sent to the database to find context paragraphs. Uh, it is also sent to the second model as instruction. So this, the, basically you can think of this as like a, a possible application of, of, of this, uh, of this of factor cognition where we apply multiple models. So uh, you can think of this, maybe the user asked a question and then M1 is instructed to, uh, to generate an extra question or to answer the question and then M2 is asked to filter or check whether the question is valid or the answer is valid. So um, when you think about this path, uh, you can see that uh, it could probably work. Okay? There, there, are, there are methods of, of using uh, multiple models, or at least a second model to verify the output of, a, of the first model. But the problem is, with this specific diagram at least, is that the, there's no path between the I node and the M2 model. So let's say if M1 was instructed to answer, or rather to answer the question, and then M2 is instructed to check that the answer is correct. Uh, the only thing you would be able to do, uh, if M1 hallucinated, M2 would only be able to check the answer's correctness based on the context. We would not be able to check based on the user's question. So if that was the case, and if, and if it assumed that the answer came from the context because it, it was part of the instructions, even if it didn't answer the user's question, the model M2 would answer the, uh, basically output its response. And you can't guarantee that the user's question would, would have been answered by M2 or would have been facilitated by M2, even if it wasn't the one actually answering the question. So uh, yeah, this is like one of the things we want to like uh, point out and fix, the link between the inode and any of the uh, decision nodes or any of the M models, uh, because the, the main, main point of like, using these diagrams is to, to show the data flow that is, that, that is uh, there and to also like change the data flow if you find that the data flow shows that the system is incorrect uh, or that the system would, would basically have a, a, a bug or a flow in the system in its design. 
So like I said, I think because this is the flow, we fix it by adding a node, uh, by adding that link rather between the two nodes. So that's IM2. Uh, so here we have IM2, and these are the diagram looks like after the after the after the fix has been applied. So uh, these two demonstrate the uh, basically the main uh, thrust of the paper. Basically, these two diagrams, because we want to go from uh, a point, seeing a system like this. Uh, so, or at least seeing the seed describing the system that it isn't saying, okay, maybe this data flow is flawed, so we can fix it by adding a node. Um, and then, then do it. So the two, these two uh, diagrams are testable, at least. Like if we take this code and we test, we test it in a certain way, then we should be able to have a test that, that tells us automatically that this one is not what we want and this one is in fact what we want. So uh, a part of the development of the paper is not, not really developing this method for testing this is this kinds of uh, these kinds of systems or at least these kinds of diagrams to, to, to actually do the, do the check. Um, then uh, uh, so I think I'll skip uh, through all of that and, and actually go for the test itself. Uh, so that you can save the time. Uh, so in this uh, in this kind of uh, check what we want to do is 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 argue for one type of what we basically uh, basically been doing uh, is arguing for one type of diagram over another and the type of diagram we're trying to keep is the type which has uh, the i node linked to the m node to any of the m nodes at, at all times so if I scroll back up to this diagram again you'll see this link this missing link i m2 uh, and uh, this this actually is, is visible. So uh, we'll now go through this uh, in a more, I guess, in a more specific way. So that the argument I'm giving is intuitive, right? It's like saying if you if you have a situation like this, you would want it to uh, you, you want to check that the diagram has this link. When if it doesn't have the link, then you shouldn't actually implement the system that looks like that. Or if you shouldn't, I guess, ship it. Or if you ship that system, you should take that, uh, replace it with a system which has better data flow. So, this intuitive argument can be turned into an actual executable program, and this is what the this is what we use answer set programming for. So, uh, this ASP answer set programming is is a nice uh, logic programming formalism that lets us define a bunch. It, it lets us define very simple rules for, I guess, a sequence of observed entities, or I guess an, a, 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 an observed list of properties that we, that we want to care about. So uh, for us, what, what do we want to care about? Uh, we want to care about uh, this, rule number three. Uh, we want to, this, you want to have a rule that fails if there's no direct link from the node I to any of the decision nodes. So that's the IM1 link I was talking about. And then we want to make sure that there's a path from the input node I to any of the decision nodes. That, that there should be a path doesn't mean that there's a direct link, right? It could be a path which skips across multiple, multiple nodes, but it has to be there. And then this first rule is a generic uh, recursive rule that just checks whether there's a path between any two nodes and we use it for this second rule. So, uh, this type of uh, rule is called an intent consistency model. This is just a name that I coined for this because we are talking about the intent, the user's intent, and the, the system being consistent with the, uh, the, or rather the system's data flow being consistent with their intent, that it actually supports the, the user's intent. Right, so uh, here I can go through one of the causal inference diagrams. So this is the very first one. Um, we use uh, this first diagram uh, it's, it's, the code is the same. You can see these links: CM1, IC, IM1, M10, and M10, and we have M1 as a decision and O as a utility. So, in answer set programming, you can just invent uh, rules and properties as long as you have a, a like a valid program to, to represent the rule. So the link, decision, chance, and utility are just uh, our own invented uh, properties. Uh, link, we use it here to link the, the, the nodes that are necessary. Uh, 
you see that it basically exactly matches it. Uh, it we also mark the decision the utility needs in the same way. And then we're more explicit uh, with chance nodes than PySeed. Uh, we can define chance nodes directly. So uh, yeah, so now I think we can now actually define the, the, the rules. So this first rule, like I said, is a recursive rule to find a path from X to Y. Uh, the way to read uh, these uh, ASD rules is to think of this as uh, the left side of an equal sign, and then this other side this is the right, the right side, right side of an equal sign. So we're saying path X Y uh, has is valid or has stable models if link X Y is valid, and then path X Y is the second the second part of this says path X Y is valid if link X Z is valid for path Z Y. So if you, you notice that we've introduced a new node in the middle Z. Basically, this is saying uh, if you have x and then y, that's true, that's that's correct. But if you have x and then z and then y, that's also correct. So that's what that supports. And the second one um, uh, is the check that actually uses this link, uh, that, 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 that uses this rule, path x, y, uh, basically saying that uh, for decision node, uh, you should have path between i and node. So it will check whether there are any nodes in between. It will check and it will, be, it will, it will accept them. Then the last rule uh, checks and fails if there is no direct link between I and C, or rather from I or C to any of the decision nodes. And you'll see here there's I M1 and C M1. So there is a path from I or C to any of the decision nodes. So this uh, will not fail for this particular diagram. Uh, so let me just describe what the part what the, uh, this the rule says. So it basically describes uh, says that direct link is valid if you have a link ID for a decision D, right? So there's a link from I to D for and where D is the decision node. And then this second and third rules of they basically show the, uh, we call these rules headless rules because this this part is missing. And it basically says that if this is correct, like if this is true, then this then there the are no stable models for the model and will actually fail. And what this means is that uh, for decision D, there's no direct link from I to D. Right? So it basically says if this is ever valid, then there are no stable models. And likewise for C, if there's no direct link uh, from C to D and you have a decision D, then fail. So um, yeah, I think this basically you have the you have the seed, you have the the mechanism through which the seed itself is defined. Like this actual code for the seed, you can translate it directly into the into the ASP language by defining these uh, four uh, these four facts, and then you can use this 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 simple recursive algorithm and this filter to decide which of the diagrams you want to accept. So um, well, I think I can now jump back here and show some things here. So we can basically go back to this, this, this two agents and say, if you ran this one, if you converted this one using, um, using this code, converted it to the ASP language, and then we ran the satisfiability checker, this would fail and this would succeed. Basically, and likewise for any other diagram in the in the paper, if there's no link from I to any of the decision nodes or C to any of the decision nodes, that that that, that could be that that actually that that check would fail. Um, an example would be this one. Uh, there's no link from I to M two or M one, so it would fail. Uh, and the, the the reason for the for the check itself is to to show that if uh, if someone asked a question in this scenario, uh, this is the question. The question gets sent to the, to the database to find context paragraphs. The question gets sent to M3, perhaps to answer the question. And then M1 and M2 perhaps are asked to, you know, summarize the, the actual context that is found or something. Uh, that 
they are all doing this without the user's input. So they don't they don't actually know what the user actually asked for. So if they hallucinate, they will impact M3 and M3 will output uh, whatever it outputs to the user. So this might actually end up uh, not working very well for the user. Um, another one which is similar to that is uh, this. So this is a is a different variant, which uh, we should basically add here in order to show that the the purpose of this is is to also in, include uh, in the discussion which kinds of tools we want to use. So imagine um, uh, if you want to really solve the hallucination problem, the thing that people typically recommend is to include re-ranking in the system so that you can re-rank the answers that you get from one part of the chain uh, so that you can filter out any incorrect answers that come in. So this diagram describes that scenario. So you have the user's question. Uh, the data flow is correct this time. Uh, the, the, all the models see the user's question, including the rank uh, system. Uh, they find paragraphs. Uh, M1 is used to answer the question. Uh, M2 answers a different question. Or you can imagine if it generates a, a different sub-question and then it uses it to answer the question. Uh, and both of them get sent to the rank. And uh, rank basically decides what to keep. Uh, and if he keeps, he decides to keep uh, M2 and not M1, then that's what it sends to M3, and M3 summarizes it and sends to the user. So that's a possible outcome. Um, and one of the things we want to uh, develop as well is the, the is the skill of finding the missing links. Uh, I think the the, the thing is uh, the thing that prompted me to develop the the satisfiability checker was because of that the difficulty of that, like. Uh, visually inspecting the graph and seeing, okay, there's a missing link between uh, the inode and one of the nodes. That's uh, that's a skill, and it basically makes it easier to just not have to think about it uh, and have the have the code execute the the checker and say, okay, this is actually a failing scenario. Uh, an example of this is here that we have, hadn't actually set out anywhere else. Uh, C, the link between C and rank. Um, going to figure out would that would that be valid or invalid. And maybe you, this is one of those scenarios where, you, from the diagram, you can decide to make to actually implement one of these systems, and say, let's test it. Uh, let's actually test an implementation where you sh shown the ranker the, the, the contents or the context, and and when you haven't shown the ranker the contents of the context, and what kinds of answers would you get from that? So uh, when we are when you're at the point of developing uh, one of these uh, workflows or one of these data flows, I think this is the point where the, the uh, these diagrams and the reasoning around them is the most useful. Uh, when you're creating, when you're, rather when you're creating variants of the systems, um, and you have actual outputs like uh, from prompts to responses, and you want to actually evaluate them, that's actually another place where these this, uh, diagrams like this would be very useful as well, uh, just because of how how easy they make the arguments and the discussions and and, uh, and, the, and the representations about them. So. I think from here, um, uh, I'd want to leave the rest of the exploration through a Q&A. So yeah, I think we can pause from here.